So I decided I would continue with the tutorial for Ireland in Hearts of Iron 4, continuing... We're coming up to the end of middle, end of June, and sooner or later we are going to have to choose one of these two paths. I'm going to go with the Fianna Fáil administration because, well, this would allow us to get into the war quicker and get rid of this, this debuff quicker. This pays off more in the long run. Let me push, getting the extra factories and population, the extra buff to infantry attack and defense, and this um, political advisor gives us 15% power gain, whereas once we get all these and then choose finish explain the blue shirts, we gain 10% power gain. It's from one advisor. I'm not planning to go fascist this time, so... This isn't much use. As it sounds, I'm basically going to be saving this, just not... I'm not going to select a focus yet until afterwards, mainly so we can just gain some extra political power a day. And start build, at this point, you should start building a few submarines. I tend to build 10 just to start with. Our production is going to be crap because we don't have a lot of dockyards. We don't have a lot of steel. So what you want to do is have some of these queued up just to have them ready. And at this point, I don't remember what I was going to research now. At this point, it doesn't really matter what you, what you research. Maybe, actually, I might as well do radio because we're going to go into radio detection and build radar a lot of it. It's bit just building up the radar here and then Cornwall, Sussex, and Anglia. That helps with air detection a lot. First ones you should build once you have that ready would be here in Munster. That'll cover a good chunk of the sea to here, a good chunk of the islands. That's pretty much what we need. And now, here's the decision we have to make. Historically, I think uh, Fianna Foil was this time around. Two. Now we ha now we have these. We could just go for push the constitution or the boss gain some power. However, I would re heavily recommend you do reclaim the treaty ports. It gives us an extra dockyard. It gives us two factories, and then this. That means we get more. We have two more factories. Production efficiency grows faster, we get more factory output, faster production speed. And then, and then if you are going with foil, I'd say go with push the constitution, then abolish the upper house, and then get this political advisor, John McQuaid. After that, you can go with these to try and get some extra political power gain and stability. Or go over here to create more factories. Or focus on sea dominance and sea dominance is may it gives us more of the fleet and bean stuff which isn't going to be all that useful to us directly however this gives us a flash 100 egg naval xp which isn't to be sneezed at this will increase our production output by, across the across the board by five percent this will allow us to make convoys cheaper and that's, um, creating convoys is a lot of how we're going to be able to help later, whether by selling them or just lend leasing them. So once you've got your first, um, submarine, just set them to exercise. I find the best way to just put is to deploy them all to the same fleet, but make sure you, um, set automatic split off. I don't know why that's not set by default. It's something that doesn't. Everyone, I think. And we're just going to keep exercising this fleet until they're fully leveled up. Or until the war breaks out. Finish. For naval spirits, instilled aggression seems to be the best one here. This one, Grand Fleet, not, not much use to us at the moment. This might not be too bad if you're creating new but we only have one. 
this again useful if we were only creating a few ones defense might be okay but extra attack is what we really need and then for spears of the navy maybe go with the naval reform just to start out with and then once you've got your once you've got a decent chunk of XP, switch over to naval refit yards. You're gonna need that just for the ship repair repair speed. Oh, before I forget, make sure you assign at least one dockyard to repairing ships. At this point, you should actually, after you've got all got all these the treaty ports and air act, you should actually be able to start building up an intelligence agency. I think G2 is what it's called in the mods, or what it's called in the base game. And then, first, after you've got um, pushed the constitution again, first guy you should go for should be your silent workhorse. And then once you've got the, what is it, the intelligence agency, get your elusive gentleman and start, bu and start building that up. A lot of what you're going to be doing with spying is just building up a couple of networks in Germany and then stealing as much industrial and naval stuff from the Germans as you can, or aircraft, or whatever. So once you get the um, spy agency, I usually rush through as many of these as possible so that once I have the spare factories, I rush through as many of these intelligence branches as I can. That once I have the spare factories, I can just go straight into here and get two more agent or agents. Start with civilian in the department because it's a prerequisite for for some of these anyway. Once you've got all this fleshed out, then go into invisible ink and blueprint stealing. Founded training can be nice, especially since the mod means. Rescuing operatives is less risky now. But the key thing is to try and get as many of the key thing here is to try and rush get at least five apartments. And by the time you've got all those five, you might as well just fill out this row and have it ready to go later. Oh, here's what we have at the moment. Like I think these are semi-randomized. To be honest, seducer or commander are usually the better ones. So a safe cracker wouldn't be bad for stealing blueprints. So I'm gonna go with this. At the moment, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna bother creating any I'm not gonna bother putting them creating any networks until I have at least three. That's the minimum you need. Next set of 150 will go political power will straight to getting our elusive gentleman to get extra upgrade slot and the the upgrades will take 25 days and 30. it's not much but it helps as soon as you have the chance to get basic rubber plants which the mod adds do so we're going to need them it also have sort of Constructing at least one synthetic refinery because we are going to need fuel. Basically, these resource ones, put them up at the top, prioritize them. I tend to have these civilian and military factories coming in just as I'm... I tend to queue them up and then move things around later. And for air doctrines, I've usually gone with battlefield support to try and buff anything that's fast as close air support. However, strategic destruction works just as well, and if you are going fighters, it's probably better. I'd say probably. Maybe because we can buff our agility for fighters just a bit sooner than we could with upper accuracy. I'm going to be going fighters this time, mainly because it allows us to put up a bit more war score in the early early on once we get in just putting a couple of fighters up over the english channel now there are two ways you can really go with this um land doctrine tree asymmetrical warfare is something that the mod adds 
wouldn't recommend it for Ireland. It's just not really that useful to us. It really comes down to the choice between firepower or grand battle plan. Grand battle plan is more long term digging in. So there are a couple of things that has like this one. You get down here to reduce our supply consumption. That might be useful. I personally prefer a superior firepower because it just buffs soft attack. And most of the most of the in the game, it's our infantry, soft targets. Now we've got enough um, army XP to use at least one spirit. I'm not going to go over spirit of the academy yet. It's either Bold attack or tenacious defense are the only two that are really useful to us. Like this might be handy for scavenger trait gain, it means we'll be more likely to pick up enemy equipment. But bold attack or tenacious defense, those are just straight up good. For spirits of the army, if you're playing, if you're playing as a democratic nation. There's no reason to go with anything but Relief of Command because that increases our army XP gain by 20%. Overwhelming Firepower can be good if, you, if you're trying to build a lot of heavy... Well, a lot of um, artillery and infantry-focused equipment. But we're not here. Again, this can be good if you're basically just going to be digging in and fighting over rivers a lot against forts or using railway guns. But again, we're not, so it's not that useful to us. And then here, it doesn't matter too much. One thing that this adds over the base game, the, the mod adds over the base game, is that these recon will gain extra 50% combat experience. So that might be helpful if you're looking for it. Smoke and fire just provides extra breakthrough for the attack. Early on, it might be worth going for this, so you can mobilize just a little bit faster, and once you start building up again, you can train up your units faster. At the moment, we don't have to spare manpower for that, but, but, but that might be handy. Something to bear in mind. Oh, perfect. We have a safe cracker. This point, at this point, once you've got three um, agents, put them, to, put them to work in Germany and spread them out as much as you can. And to get, over, get a nice overlap there. So at this point, you should probably at least have one air doctrine and enough XP for Spirit of the Air Force. To be honest, the only one that's really worth going with here is um, Branch Independent Spirit. That will give us a flat 0.2 air experience gain per day. And we're already gaining 0.3 from our Chief of Air Force, so it's a bit of a no-brainer. This can be good if you, if you want to train them up quicker. Aerian wings, once you have them, we don't have any yet. That's good if you want um, paratroopers. Again, we're not going with it. And then for a Spirit of Air Force Command, centralized control is just a general... It buffs all air mission efficiency by 10% and gives our fighters plus 10% into action. The rest of these, that's more if you're doing strategic bombing. We won't. We don't have the industry for that. Air power protection, that's only really useful if you just need to get a little bit extra for power drops. This is better if you're actually going with them. This not sure what the air home defense factor is. Maybe we'd be more effective over our territory. This is this is more of a we are going to lose people, let's try and mitigate that thing. This is probably good if you're going for um Close air support only, but we're not. Once you have enough political power to select legal status of women, I usually go with the total equality after got rid of the trade war issue. 
for then it just isn't worth the debuff to factory output. This out now, however, we gain 200 manpower a week. Just a flat increase and 20% extra recruitable population. So that would be 1.2 times 1.5. But still, that'll add up, especially once we start changing our conscription laws. And the factory output debuff, you can see it's not that, not that much. Then for, once you have enough political power for social order, I'd recommend the cultural norms. The extra stability is helpful, resource gains helpful, factory output, that partly offsets the one from total equality. The rest of these are we all have, they have all have debuffs to stability, which is a bit of a problem. For this, the only one that's really worth going with is maybe balanced approach. We're not really gonna be having much of a much um garrisoning. We won't be garrisoning a lot of places, so this the debuff isn't that big of a problem. But again, the compliance game is not going to be much use to us. So, at the, at the moment, be between now and World War II kicking off, between getting rid of that trade war and getting this, this path done, focus on your industry. So, go through here, get some more factories. Maybe once you get construction three, get this. Might also be worth going straight down to reform the taxes because that gains you another power gain, political power gain buff and require less construction factories, civilian factories. And once you've got the, it's always worth getting one of the getting this done immediately. Infiltrating civilian administration. It's it does require some factories this time around, but we're okay on those. And it's a prerequisite for it being industrial blueprints anyway. So by July of wait, the start of July nineteen thirty nine, you should have got at least to study foreign ship design. At this point, you will need to have the Brits and Yanks approve of you to get the next focuses. You want maybe just some spin in the political power for what spin for a while to like get some extra political because not selecting a focus grants us plus one power a day. Or rather it doesn't subtract one. And we are gonna be a little short of that for now. One thing I would recommend is if you have the spare power, try and improve our improve work conditions to get the stability up. You can probably ban either fascism or communism if you think it's necessary. A lot of what we're going to be saving our power for is partial mobilization once the war kicks off, or even war economy. Ah, now we can actually get the Yanks Yanks happy with us. That means we'll get some extra. And then once that's done, you can basically just stop closing up to them. And apart from that, basically, as it, we're, what we're aiming towards now is as soon as the this focus triggers, i.e. the UK is at war with Germany, Italy, or the US, or France, get this, then get temporary state guidance. I wouldn't bother with broad censorship initiative until later when you actually need the extra war support. Then get this. And then once that happens, if you are going to be joining the Allies, use a uh, negotiate Northern Ireland for assistance. Unless you just want to play this, until, unless you just want to play very historical. The fact that Sweden has joined the Allies in this game shows you how far that's. 
And while you have the option to take <clears throat> these training exercises, just keep taking them. They cost five political power and a hundred um, infantry equipment. So we have a lot of those, even with some on the mark. Once you've got the this, you might as well go the mission to the British Navy Yards. War is going to kick off very quickly. So basically, while we're not going to be using much of a large fleet, we're we're basically gaining some extra factory out, dockyard output. Even if we don't have the steel for all this yet. What this one here will do, it'll cost 10% cheaper, so we can just spat, just put more of them out. In fact, might as well just put a couple up on the market now for see who's interested. War hasn't kicked off yet, but I've just got these mission to the both naval yards. So basically, our convoys cost 63 production out costs rather than 70 means we can just get more of them out quicker. At this point, we're basically waiting for the war to kick off, which could be the end of September. If you have the spare time, you can put it in here. Or if you want, if you want to go into encourage foreign investors, get some extra factories, that's up to, that, that works just as well. So basically, choose a focus. Go complete it, maybe. Definitely, definitely look at it. Just English. And then once you get a chance to get the Emergency Powers Act, it doesn't get come up by the end of September. I'm just going to go straight into the Spain investors thing I showed here. Oh, Germany has just declared this is just by a goal, war goal on Denmark. So it's going to heat up, heat up soon. There we go. So at this point, we're waiting for uh, Luxembourg has joined the Allies. Asian forced into hiding. Yeah. If you have the spare power, you might go for this portable radios, make them less noticeable. Or bare factories, you probably should. Now we can actually use the Emergency Powers Act. And it'll take 14 days less. That's good. Once you've fleshed out the submarine operations side of the fleet and being tree, pretty much go wherever you want. I personally tend to go for convoy sailing and then convoy escorts because I might actually want some destroyers later. But again, that's up to that's up to you. Maybe you want to go with more, more light cruisers or stuff like that. For the rather large buff. After I've got this, I'm going to pause this tutorial here. But once you've got this, go for negotiate Northern Ireland for assistance. Then put your submarines on convoy raiding even before this happens. So the reason you want to have them here is this will prevent any hinder any naval invasions around Ireland and a lot of German supplies will go through here now, if you really later in the game if you want to be sure you'll get as many great convoys as possible tar just target Cape Verde plain that should that's pretty much the only way th way through apart from the Suez Canal and Gibraltar and even if they do get If the Brits lose both both the Suez Canal and Gibraltar Strait, then things have gone very, very. At this point, you should have changed your conscription to limited conscription and got at least eight divisions. Get more if you want, but you might also want to wait until you've mobilized enough for your population. Generally, I tend to tell them to sit on the on the coast. Don't bother guarding the railway hubs and supplies. Maybe don't bother with the airbase because there's only one. 
the AI is almost certainly going to try landing on the East Coast, maybe the South, or maybe the North, once they've actually... Once they've tried, once we get out, get the North. And there's been, there's been a few times in previous games where I've had them, them take... Uh, we've had the Germans take um, Belfast just before we join the Allies. I think it probably would help smooth things along in real life if that did happen. Let's see. You might want to go into this, um, well, I can hold off on getting this until you can get the Antrim Torpedo Factory because that will at least buff your submarines once you rebuild them. Once you do that, this will buff tor submarines as well as... Basically, this torpedo can only go on um, surface ships, but this buff here, this protect here will buff subs. So will this, so will this. We're basically just waiting for things to happen. Maybe war hysterity trains because we don't need trains a lot. So I'm just going to sell off a few. Somebody might buy them, help us build up our army a little bit more. So this part is going as expected. Netherlands has fallen. Denmark fell. Swedes are holding around Helsingborg because of this straight to Copenhagen. And it looks like someone is trying to take the um, Pharaohs, probably the UK. Yeah, for a dog for air doctrine, if you're going strategic destruction, I'd recommend air superiority efficiency. We're going to be doing that a lot. At the moment, we only have 43 planes, still building more. But we'll get there. I'm pre I pretty much just got past this IRA defense membership thing. Now, after that, like this, and you will be ready to join the war. I think I may cover that in the, in another episode. This was just it's getting a setup from after the election in 37 until we just until us being ready to join. So I'll see you in the next one. Bye for now.